Now we're going to go on to introduction to the applied accessibility challenges uh, of the free code camp walkthrough. Uh, so let's uh, get started. This is all about um, making sure people that are impaired can still use the website without any troubles. So that includes people with visual, auditory, mobility, or cognitive disabilities. So let's see what they have for us. All right, first thing, add a text alternative to images for visual impaired accessibility. So we have this alt tag in case an image doesn't load, it displays this text. So, right, this image didn't load, but now it has cat beside it. So, let's see if that works. Yep. All right, uh, know when alt text should be left blank. Uh, so, you actually need the alt tag when you have an image, or you need the alt attribute when you have an image, like it's required. But if you your uh, if your text already explains what it is, then just leave it blank, and then it'll be fine. All right, now we want to use headings to show hierarchical relationships of content. This is more of a design thing, where you want your most important things to be bigger on the page uh, than the others. So here we just want to change all the H5s to H3s. All right, I changed all the H5s to H3s. Let's see if it works. Yep. All right, now we have jump straight to the content using the main element. Uh, so it, yeah, there's all these other tags uh, that do the same thing as a div, but they let you know, like for a person that's looking at your code, they know like what section, what the sections are. So uh, for this challenge, all we want to do is have a main tag in here. So there we go. All right, now we want to wrap content in the article element. So for this challenge, challenge, we want to change this div to an article like he did down here. So we'll do that article and article here. Let's see if that works. Yep. All right, now we want to make screen reader navigation easier with the header landmark. All we want to do for this one is change this div to a header uh, to show uh, the header. This is uh, different than the head element. The head element is like where you have links to uh, your style sheets and stuff, but this is like the header uh, element for like a div. So there we go. Now we want to make screen reader navigation easier with the nav landmark. So for this, just change this div to a nav. Pretty simple. Nav just like a div, except it says it's a nav bar basically. All right, make screen reader navigation easier with the footer landmark, same as the other ones. Just change this div to a footer instead of a div. Pretty simple. Now we want to improve accessibility of audio content with the audio element. So the audio element will say audio. So for this challenge we want to uh, take some audio with this audio tag. We don't need an ID and we also don't need the second one. We just need one of them and we want to set this, uh, this mp3 uh, link to the source and then we want to set the type to audio mpeg which it's already sets so now we can play it and it plays the, <laughs> plays the audio so let's just see if that works yep. all right now we want to improve chart accessibility with the figure element so same as like the footer and the nav we want to change this to figure this is like where you're supposed to put all your uh, bar charts and uh, stuff or stats, uh, but yeah, put fig caption here and fig caption for the closing take caption, and let's see if that works. Oh, I need a P here. There we go. Now I want to improve form field accessibility with the label element. Uh, so this isn't needed, but for this challenge, uh, we want to have a four and then have it be the e, the ID of the input tag. So whatever this is, it should be what the four is. So label for this input. Uh, let's see if that works. Yep. All right, now we want to wrap radio buttons in a field set element for better accessibility. What this is saying is we want to group all of our uh, like radio buttons into a field set. So it's just like a div, but 
field set uh, like the other ones, but gives it better readability for other coders. And we want to change this P to uh, legend. So legend tells you what it is for. And yeah, legend. Let's see if that works. Yep. All right, now we want to add an accessible date picker. This is pretty cool. It actually shows you like a date. So we want to add an input tag right here with type date. And yeah, it shows up like that. Uh, it kind of does all, all the little things for you. Uh, we want to set the input type to, or the ID to pick date and the name to date. And let's see if that works. Yep. All right, now we want to standardize times with the HTML5 date time attribute. For this, we want to have a time, a time tag around Thursday, September 15th, uh, sup. Um, and then we want to have an attribute in this time tag here uh, as date time equals, and then the, the date, which is 2016, 09, uh, 15. So let's see if that works. Yep. All right, now we want to make elements only visible to a screen reader by using custom CSS. Um, we want to use this CSS here and put it into uh, this and see what that looks like, see if it helps. Uh, so yeah, so now it's like just stacked bar chart, I think. I don't really know what that did, but I think it'll work. Yep. All right, now we want to improve readability with high contrast text. So right now it's really hard to read because there's not enough contrast. So for this challenge, we want to put this color as the color for instead of this gray, have it be this gray. And then there it's a little easier to read. All right, now we want to avoid color blindness issues by using sufficient contrast. So I know colorblind people, they like see green and red like the same colors or like the same sort of gray. Uh, so, <laughs> so for this challenge, we want to change this HSS, HSL, uh, lightness property from 35 to 55 and from 20 to 15 percent. And there it's easier to read now. All right. Now we want to avoid color blindness issues by carefully choosing colors that convey information. Uh, so yeah, trying to avoid yellow and green together. <laughs> uh, they instead want us to use this blue color. Uh, this hex code blue instead of this color put it as this color and now it's easier to read uh, it's not really that blue it looks kind of like black to me but let's see right now we want to give links meaning by using descriptive link text so instead of click here which doesn't really tell you what it's about like where the link takes you you want to wrap it around something that uh, kind of describes what it's gonna take you to so now it says information about battery, so that's what you expect you're going to get when you click on that. All right, now we want to make links navigable with HTML access keys. So this is for people that use keyboard only, uh, so they can navigate to the link really quick. So have an at access key equal to G, so when they click G, then it'll take, take them to that uh, link. And then this one will be access key C for Chuck Norris. So there we go. All right, now we want to use tab index to add keyboard focus to an element. So for this challenge, we just want to have tab index property on here, uh, set it to zero. And apparently, then it also makes the um, makes the focus work. At least it says it should. I don't know if it does or not. Oh, like when you click on it. So yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not hover, it's focus. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, now we want to use tab index to specify the order of keyboard focus for several elements uh, for the challenge. All that means is putting tab index uh, of one for this input and then tab index of two for the submit uh, part. So then when they tap through, it goes to those, I think, maybe, I don't know, whatever. Let's see if that works. Yep. 
And there we go. We completed that part of the uh, free code camp. Uh, next up, we're going to do introduction to the responsive web design challenges. So stay tuned for that. See ya. Thanks for watching. <laughs>